uh, we were focusing on the IEBC and whether there's enough scrutiny now ahead of 2017 election in as far as their preparedness for that election and more so fixing the problems and errors and mistakes that were made in the last general election. And Ohito, not much, not too many, not enough questions or even questions at all are being asked um, in as far as ensuring this commission and that faith. Remember the confidence Kenyans had ahead of 2013 is restored or perhaps, you know, I want, I want to look at IABC merely as an umpire of an exercise. And their role is much more event fixed or event focused, which is the election. But Kenya's problem is not even IABC. Let's start with political parties until and unless we will have sober democracy, genuine representation which reflects the will of the people in political parties. It doesn't matter if even if you brought Jesus Christ and Prophet Muhammad to the IABC chair or commissioners, you will not go anywhere better. And Krigler said it as much. As long as you have the president party has never held an election, how do you expect the process to be fairer? But who the deputy the president's example? party has never held elections. The, 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 the main opposition party held one which was botched and nobody's talking about Correct, it. Correct, there are problems or hit on yes. that end, but that should so, not be the excuse for not What having it means is that the net impact will be blamed on this umpire. If you have nominees who are not vetted through the structures of popular will of the people, there's no way you can hold a free and fair election. That is a basic of democracy. But how do you relate that with flopping of equipment that we had reassurances to the last minute? That has nothing to do with flopped or botched nominations. That's purely on if the If equipment flop and you have nominees running for elective positions who lost in the primaries, it doesn't matter. Even if the equipment worked, no, it will not change the will of I, the people. I, I think the, I mean the, the, the video did look uh, I think uh, in, in, in April or June, the, there was a forum at which even Lanas Kekai was there, and he was saying that we overtrusted the IEBC, and yeah. that's the truth. You know, our press did not look hard enough at what was happening. They actually, the test for this thing, uh, which happened, I think, a week before the election or something, failed. You know, they, were, they went to Kasarani. You know, these oh, things there. actually <laughs> failed. You know, yeah. and nobody reported it. You know, and it was just assumed <laughs> that, 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 that we're okay. You know, um, I think throughout, in terms, of, there has been a reluctance to question what went wrong during the election simply because of the political connotations with it. You know, when you question it, you're supposed to be, you, you are seemed to be questioning the president, uh, uh, ODM, and questioning the president's legitimacy. You know, um, my point, I think, is if we want to have a better election in 2017, we need to know what went wrong. I don't think we have dug deep enough. Mm. Or, or we have uh, uh, committed enough resources into looking back and saying these are the things that went wrong, and this is what needs fixing. Clay, uh, I, I think it's all about uh, it's all about questions. Uh, we're not asking the right questions right now. I think um, I can IEBC is dithering, and uh, nobody is following them up to ask them the, the right questions because they don't come out as openly as they used to come out before uh, 2013. Yeah. And I think it's it's uh, it's up. To it's our duty or it's up to us to actually go and seek them out. But you know what, in our defense, for the show especially, I've been trying to get them on the show for weeks now. And they mm. always have an excuse of why they cannot they come. Make. They're still <laughs> deciding on positions or, I don't know, on this, on the other. So IBC, just a reminder, <laughs> we're open for an interview. But yes, go ahead. I, I think that's, that's some, one of the things that we, we, that we need actually to, to point out that they're actually running away from the yeah, media. They are. And actually, if they keep on running away from the media, well, then let's well, give them a blackout. Well, actually. not really. But, but I, 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 mean, and I don't think, again, this uh, idea of, of official sources that we always have to be getting it from them. It is what I'm, no, I'm, for I'm fair saying. Play, actually, for no, fair play, you need to they, talk to they, them, I mean, yeah. if they don't want to speak, you know, so who do we speak it's, to? Uh, I mean, let's go out and get the stories. Let's go out and find out what went wrong. These are not just things that the chairman you know, will tell Gadara, you. Gadara, you I know. mean, like there's some things you need to but confirm from not, IEBC well, itself. I mean, I, I mean, you can't go around writing IBC, stories but, around. My, my my argument would be yes. There are several faults that journalists have failed to look at into. Uh, in the question of how the election was managed and how the processes went through. There are cases of missing papers. There are instances of 
wrong results being read by returning officers. There are several petitions that were approved with evidence before courts of law. And that tells you there must have been a bigger problem. And what we have done every time the media has criticized or a, a politician has cr criticized IABC, they're told you are criticizing IABC but you participated in a by-election. Uh, which for me doesn't really make sense. We should have a foolproof electoral system. We should know uh, how many people are registered. We must make sure that the register is ready for inspection by all interested parties and stakeholders before election, not one or two days before you run for office. And we should see IBC cracking whip on politicians that tried to, you know, cook the elections or were involved in cr criminal acts within the electioneering period. No action has been taken against them. We have not seen an individual being bad that you committed this kind of an electoral offense and they have all those powers. You know, uh, those are kind of signs. If you ask me, uh, Isaka Hassan looks like he resigned long before. I don't know what is still doing in office. Uh, I mean, the other day you actually said that uh, uh, elections in Kenya are very expensive. And that is a fact. Elections in Kenya are very expensive from both ends. In as much as I've never understood why a country with such an economy like Kenya should hold one of the most expensive elections. You see, he, when they... They're when printing they, material abroad. That is what, no, why? Printers. Why did they even get, to, why, how did they get there? No. Why did we get there? We, we, never, we held a cheap one in Gatundu South. So yeah, we never, <laughs> we, no, that was not, a, we never held an election. <laughs> you see, we never held an election. That's but a it, joke. Yeah, but you see what is, yeah, I, I understand. But you see, one thing we never asked ourselves is, how come, why do we hold some of the most uh, expensive elections? Based on this, here's a case where expensive in as much as we don't have a cap on funding, on political, on politi political on the spending. <clears throat> we don't have a cap on that. At the same time, we don't have a cap on how much the electoral body can spend. Because sometimes, I mean, if you listen to some of the Pulua supply, some of the things that uh, they were hiring vehicles, they were hiring oh. vehicles, what you'd hire for probably 4,000 bob a day. They were hiring for 15, 20, 15 to 20,000 shillings a day. Mm -hmm. So. All these things, we, we're not asking the right questions. And I think, right, this is the time to put IEBC to task, like when the, the, the IEBC chair says, like, we have the most expensive elections. We need to put him to task and actually to explain further mm -hmm. what is he planning to do to cut the costs because he's still in office. Yeah, fine. Uh, and, yeah, and I'm quite happy with that. Printing, yeah, no, I'm quite it. happy with that. But um, I, I go back to, to, to the point that you don't have to wait for him the day he agrees to come sit on your chair. Uh, I, I get uh, your point, your yes, yes, I agree. For I you agree. to actually look into these issues, yeah. you know. But these uh, are questions that we need to keep on so asking Gadara, every in the day. Event, when you we want to keep on answers on questions. questions of where IBC is at, what they are doing, well, who other than the commissioners well, and the actually, what you want is to dig into the stories and to find out the things that they don't want to tell you. You know, and then confront them with this information. You know, if you look back, actually, if somebody goes back and looks through the trolls through the petitions that were there, you know, as Ohito has said, there's lots of information mm -hmm. in there mm -hmm. about the irregularities that are there. I mean, one of the things, think about uh, the, uh, what's the name? Mm, Kilonzo's. Uh, uh, mm, uh, Kathy? Yeah, uh, uh, Kate. The sleep? Yeah. You know. When they were talking about people being, and this is a, a, a IBC admitting, people are being registered with expired documents. You know, they turn up with it, and it happened. And even candidates <coughs> are registered this way. You know, nobody follows up. You know, what are the rules? What happened? What could? What went wrong? What didn't? What worked? What didn't work? You know, and then confront them with this. Let them explain themselves. Give them an opportunity. But their word is not. You know, biblical. Uh, yeah, the, the CEO was fired for <laughs> allegedly <laughs> you know. participating in, you know, irregularities himself within the institution. These are matters that, you know, should have been told well in public so that get people get to know that this institution really means well for this country. But as, as it stands, you know, looks rather less, if you like. Migori has joined a national conversation <laughs> following the events the, the day before yesterday. And it was interesting to see the coverage from those who felt that the rowdy youth were...
pretty much opposed to what it is the president was saying. They did not want him there or to say whatever. Others, you know, the other reportage was on the governor and that there were issues that had been there before and the president was just caught up in the middle. Was that story clear, Gadara? Uh, well, I, I don't think it was. I, I, I remember I watched KTN, was it uh, uh, on Monday or yesterday? And uh, one of the, uh, the reporter was saying that it's, it's the president who calmed down the crowd. Well, they, well, actually, is that true? <laughs> you know, from what I had, probably not. You know, um, I don't know. I, I think there was a, a lot of confusion about what happened. W one of the things I found interesting, uh, uh, though, and this came from the clips that I just saw, was that well, there seemed to have been an appeal to the police, you know, uh, to security agencies to keep off the people, you know, uh, not, not to go after them, which is a market change from uh, 69 when uh, 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 the, the other Kenyatta the father. <laughs> you know, uh, 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 was stoned mm. you know, in Kisubu you know, uh, 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 and they opened fire. So um, I found that interesting and perhaps it speaks to how more conscious this president is about the, the pictures that might come out True. You know, in yeah. terms of them starting to beat up people or to fire. Oh, um, let me add my voice that that smacks of politics of intolerance and should not be allowed in a modern day democracy. I think the people of Migori need soul searching that we can no longer come to a function to boo leaders, to embarrass the president and his guests. I think that was the worst thing that ever happened um, in recent times. But that said, I think the president hopes to get a new intelligence chief because if you have a proper working intelligence system, then you would guess what would happen before there and you know how to navigate the waters. If the people of Migori had an issue with the governor, he is elected as far as I'm concerned. Or by those by. same people. The same people. Why would you choose to make noise at well, him when actually, he has guests? No, Gabriela, let me develop the, my <laughs> point. If the intelligence was working, then you have a head of state and commander in chief of the armed forces coming to your function, then he would tell you this is about to happen, this is the dynamics on the ground, irrespective of whether the boys were bought a day earlier, the same day, or many moments before the president spoke. But politicians in that area need a lot of soul searching. That was an embarrassment that we don't need to get the president involved in. I think the president went there for a particular function to deal with health concerns. That is one area and region that still die, uh, I mean, records lots of deaths arising from malaria. And that function should have gone normally without the noise. Why is it that they did not heckle when the president was issuing checks to Ken farmers who had been paid pending 400 million shillings? Those are begging questions. Uh, I, I, I think all these things have been said, but uh, there's, there's one thing that um, we actually, uh, the point that we're actually not, uh, not looking at, and uh, as since that we're here to look at the, the media coverage, how many people actually knew that the president was going to talk about malaria, that Mr. Kenyatta was going to be going to talk about malaria? How many people knew that, that Mr. Kenyatta was going to, to give about, to, check, to, give, to sweeten sugars was? The whole point, all the newspapers, and this is how it was recovered. Charm offensive. T charm offensive. Text battle. He was actually yeah. taking <laughs> battle to Nyanza. You see, that's one thing. So the we residents know what has We have, we have to look at that also. We have to look how the media Are you covered saying this. the media incited the people? No, I'm just telling you how the media itself <laughs> covered this. For us, it was battle. It was war. You see, I agree with you about the intelligence and all that because this is, this is not good. Okay. Jeering presidents is not anything new. It's mm -hmm. not anything new. They do it, it everywhere. I, I, I mean, yeah. I just Googled yesterday Obama jeered, and I think like in the past um, six months, there have been like 15 incidents mm -hmm. where he's been jeered. So this is not anything new. And um, going with our, st with our with Kenya's thing, like, oh, that's a global problem. Let's probably let's ask <laughs> the US for help. <laughs> anyway, that aside, that aside, that aside, um, I think the, the whole thing was that the way media, the build up, to the event, mm -hmm. it was battle. Takes takes battle to Nyanza. Mm -hmm. Takes battle to Raila Taf. I mean, nobody talk, was talking about the development. We saw the politics bit of it. So if these people also figured like this was a political thing, so be it. But after this, the point that actually we've not covered is one thing, and I keep on saying this: how 
polarized this country is. That yeah. is the point. Mm -hmm. And I keep on saying this, the government should stop dividing Kenyans. Mm -hmm. They should stop doing that. And now those are the fruits. Yeah, I, mean, I, 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 I agree. So it's just I agree. the government to blame when it comes to no, dividing? No, no. No, I mean, it's both sides. I agree. Exactly. I, agree. Sure. I, 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 I agree with Clay to one extent that moments before the president uh, set foot on Migori soil, he had made very alarming statements warning governors in Jubilee that you quit the party and you are going to an area which is pro referendum frenzy. Frenzy, I mean, uh, you expected some gestures, of course. But two, that does not allow that, that does not mean that we should really encourage this politics of intolerance. I think Kenya should grow into a mature democracy where you should be allowed to, to speak your ideas and the other side speak their ideas without engaging in violence. Mm -hmm. I think when we get to that level of state of affairs, this would be a better country. Um, I, I, I would agree with Clay in the sense that the way the media, the whole, the way the media frames the whole thing. Um, uh, it, it's, it's, I mean, it's over, the, the overriding thing is a political It's what point. will sell. Imagine a headline yeah, yeah. saying, Mal President to distribute malaria, what? <laughs> in, anyway. you know, but, I mean, uh, we, we, we've got also to recognize that these are, these rallies are political events. You know, it's not that people wouldn't get nets if President didn't turn up. You know, or we are hoping it's not that they wouldn't yeah. get nets if he didn't turn up. Yes. You know. But he's there to portray himself in a certain way, you know. Um, so there are political events, and people will have the political opinions. Now, um, while I don't condone uh, 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 the violence uh, of it, I really find the insistence that sometimes we have on not embarrassing the president, or not embarrassing our leadership, to be um, a bit overdone. Yeah, you know, um, these guy, guys will embarrass us every bloody day <laughs> you know every oh, day when you can't say on national TV you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know. and the thing is when we try and and hide from them the fact that there is discontent that there is disenchantment you know that the only pictures we have are what we used to have during Moist time <laughs> of, yeah people are cheering everybody is happy it is the, yeah you know precisely you know it not only um, pampers their ego, what it does is it dehumanizes everybody else. You know, it says they are just the psychophants so of, yes, yes, we are happy, you know. Um, instead of them being people who can actually disagree with the president, they can actually say we don't like what he's saying or what he's doing, you know, and stuff, and actually have a fora with which to express it. And say, you know, that is what we are saying, you know, Nagara, that we can say we, we don't can like have, you yeah. in a civil manner. Precisely, and that's yeah. what I'm saying. So I don't condone the actual throwing of stuff, you know, and things. There's a civil way But there go. are ways we can uh, uh, allow people and encourage express them, you know, if, if they want to protest, for example, during uh, uh, events to picket them and stuff. They can do this, and the media should be actually able to go out and cover that. Okay. So it's not always this picture that if the president turns up, everybody has got to be smiling. Meanwhile, last week, I remember a friend of mine showing me a picture on Instagram, and I thought it was Photoshop. The president in full military gear. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's Photoshop. And then went online yeah. and realized, oh, actually, for real, he's yeah. <laughs> in it. Um, Ohito, what did you think about that? Um, I had several ways of looking. Although at I thought he looked good. That's, yeah. Uh, looking looking good, good is one thing. Um, <laughs> but, but he also sent unnecessary messages across. Mm -hmm. um, We've seen enough commanders in chief across the globe, and they don't do that. I don't know what happened to his that uh, handler. Um, uh, he didn't have to necessarily put it. Well, we know it's the commander in chief. Nobody's in doubt. Uh, we know we have challenges with security issues. Nobody's so your problem is that what? He rubbed it in people's faces that is the CIC? I, yes. And uh, two, uh, you know, ah. when you put that attire, it comes with, you know, the trappings that it trails along. The, it means you want to show yourself as a forceful person. And for it, what he was going to launch, did that not it? doesn't matter. It? Yes. it has been launched all over the world. It was launched by Kibaki, launched by Moi. <laughs> we never saw them. Uh, let me give Kenya an example. But the fact that he could retire his formal dress code into that military 
you know, sent very many signals across that this guy wants to show us this powerful. Yes, we know he's enjoying less power than Moi did, less than Kibaki did, <laughs> but that was not the best way to exhibit himself, may, if may, you yeah. ask me. I think it was unnecessary. I, 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 what made me uncomfortable with it? Um, uh, and I, it, this is not just for him. I, I mean, I, I've, I've worked in other uh, uh, countries and seen uh, presidents and prime ministers all do, uh, do the same thing. You know, uh, there are two things. I don't really like it when civilians who are put in charge of militaries then pretend to be military people. They actually are not. The president is not a military person. You know, and we are very clear in our constitution that the civilians are the people who could direct the military. He should never be pretending to be a military person. He's not. Then, if you look at his uniform, you know, it even had the five stars or a five-star general, you know, and stuff. He is not a five-star general. The way he laughed around in it. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is the thing, you know. So, um, I think for, for me, the... So, wait, are you also opposed, for instance, when there's, um, the Muslims are fasting and he'll wear one of those and sit down with them for I a think meal? Because that's he's also no, actually, Muslim. because there's no such thing as Muslim dress. You know, <laughs> this is different. You know, um, this uniform means something. You know, um, uh, it's the reason why I, I can't just walk into a shop and buy it you know, and, 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 and walk around with it. You know, it means something. Mm -hmm. You know, and and my the president should always be above. While he does control KDF, he's not part of it. You know, he's part of the civilian, the political machinery that controls. Um, are the military, and we should always keep it clear that it's uh, it's the civilians in charge. We've seen countries here in uh, uh, in Africa. What happens when the military takes over? You know, and I I, I really wouldn't want us to confuse okay. this too. You know, it's always the civilians in charge. So he has every right to put on uh, uh, a thing, but for me it feels um, uh, it's, it's very it's a very uncomfortable image. Clay, uh, I, I I think uh, the only thing probably the 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 fashionistas needed to look at it more, not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and actually tell us whether it was fitting well or, or something like that. I don't have an opinion on it, on it completely. But I, I know totally you have, have an opinion. <laughs> I saw him took a, take a salute <laughs> with it. Yeah. You saw him? Take a salute with oh. it and it really... What is happening is out. this, um, I, think, I think what's happening is um, Mr. Kenyatta... I mean, you guys have done so many things to this this gentleman here. I mean, you've stolen his car, <laughs> <laughs> his land. <laughs> you've stolen his land. I mean, I think land. at some point he needs to tell you guys like, the hey, people, I'm in charge. I'm in charge, you know. And, uh, and I thought he looked quite excited, actually. You know, yeah, I think he, he was shocked. He, he was shocked himself. He looked like, himself. like a boy with a yeah, car. Yeah, from my school uniform. And I'm like, what the media means to say, like, actually. That's my point. The KDF is not a toy. What Mr. Yeah. Kenara is doing here is um, there's so many of his communication so-called experts who've actually messed him up and actually is trying to send a message like, okay, fine, you people, I'm in charge. There are too many people who've messed him up with them. Okay. Yeah. And, we have um, two minutes to go, Clay, but you wanted to comment about the car finally being found. You feel that I think the presidential for the, for, fleet for, car for, was the media at its best. I think, I think this one, <laughs> uh, I have to give up. Uh, this one, media is 100%. I mean, there have been so many denials, though this is not a state house car, this is not a ward car, this is, not, this, is not, this is a police car. But I think the media has actually insisted and maintained that this was a, pres a part of the presidential escort car. All indications, all security agencies, Interpol, and all this. Because if it was just a police car, I don't think it could have been re returned so very fast mm -hmm. the way it was. And I think this one, the media was very sure. And despite what State House said, despite all the, ref the communication the riffraff said on, 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 on new media and all that, I think the media st stuck on its guns and mm. actually maintained that for this, the media was sure. And I think when we are that sure, we should actually stick to it. And that's why... Uh, but, but one, one quick point I'd make on that mm. is, then why isn't the media calling out the people in State House, uh, like uh, Emmanuel Sipisu, who came yeah. out and said it is not? No, uh, we think that, that is being done this way. That is being done this uh -huh. way. By 
completely everyday reporting about that car and calling it the president's car. No, no. I mean, the point is, him, State House trying him, to lie to us. We're actually us, telling you know. him yeah, that you lied and that instead of you know, now going for the person, you know. that is the message you're sending. But you're not you confronting lied. State House with the truth. All yeah. you're saying is you're you know the truth the and we're going this way. He's talking about coming out and saying. What I'm talking about is accountability. It's not a sign of weakness on the side of the media. What's Manoa's accountability for telling us things? Yeah, because he'll come next week and tell us something else. It's not a sign of weakness on the media <laughs> but there is a case, here is a case where really. here is a case where we are actually telling him that you are weak <laughs> <laughs> it's not the media that is weak Le, I, I, I think <laughs> it is wrong to say 100% of the job has been done I think this is the beginning of a new job we must be told how much did it take Kenyan taxpayers to bring that car back and who oh, is no, just a minute. Two. We, we, Two. We have to, no, no, just, just him, don't say just the car. The BMW. I think we, <laughs> the we're forgetting that. Okay. No, BMW. Uh, how much did it cost the taxpayers? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you know, who is responsible? And three, if this car has come back to Kenya, where is it? Who is it assigned to? If you ask me, that's a car should, that should either be taken to a museum or it should be auctioned in public that, so that we recover some of these costs. BMW auction, that is brand branded diffamation. What's we must you? end it there. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping we'll see some of those stories now starting yeah. to come up. Oh, you don't. BM, BMW, uh, first of all, they made a mistake, call it a, an old BMW. <laughs> BMWs don't grow old. They age, you know, yeah, like why? Yeah, it's wine. rather old looking Semantic or aged. Um, I would hope to talk about ICC, but conversation we can start off next time. Thank all you right. all for joining us. Always a pleasure. Uh, we'll see you again soon. Have a lovely day. That's All the right. newsroom uh, for you this morning. Stay with us. We continue with the show shortly.